So in general, a real lean, a real lean project will involve implementing a range of solutions, a range of common solutions. And I'm going to elaborate a little bit now on what those generally are, regardless of whether the assignment is in manufacturing, QC, QA or R&D. So any real lean solution, first of all, has to be based on solid project goal deployment. So when you start the transformation project with the client, you need to be very clear on what it is measurably that you're trying to achieve and what you believe you're going to have to do in order to achieve it. You do that using project goal deployment. And then when you're coming towards the end of the project, you have to equip the client to manage the value stream in a lean way when the project is finished. Because obviously BSM is a consulting company, it's not going to stay there forever. And it's very important that it gives the client the goal deployment processes that are necessary to manage the value stream in a lean way. So that's a very, very fundamental um, lean, lean tool. The second one I'm going to talk about is the one that's probably most prominent in all of the work that we do, and it's what we call leveling. So those of you who are familiar with us via uh, Lean Lab projects, and I'm sure many of you are, would be familiar with the terms rhythm wheel and trains. So rhythm wheels and trains are tools that were introduced by BSM that enable people to achieve what we call leveling. Now I'm going to talk more in a minute about what leveling is, but it's, a, it's probably the single most fundamental practice that we help people to implement. Flow clearly, so the using implementing practices, techniques that improve the rate of flow, that increase speed, that increase velocity. Obviously, anyone who knows anything at all about lean will know that that's a core element of lean. Standard work, what that means to me is finding a really good way of doing something and using that as a foundation for continuous improvement. Obviously, a core element of, of lean. And the final element for the moment uh, is what, what we call in BSM lean organization. So why do we address this? Well, when you implement the kind of practices I've just been talking about, very commonly, the organization structure that you had beforehand is no longer suitable for the processes that you're trying to organize afterwards. Um, so it is very common towards the end of a lean transformation project for BSM to help the client to restructure the organization. Okay, so on the, on the screen, I have, you, will, you will now see a line, a bold line appearing across the screen. And the reason the line is on the screen is so that I can tell you some things, some important things in my opinion, about the items that are above that line. So first of all, to me, those are fundamental lean building blocks. So if you're asking yourself, what was the difference between Toyota and Honda on the one hand and General Motors and Ford on the other? Well, you're going to find a lot of these things. If you went back 20 or 30 years, you're going to find a lot of them in Toyota and Honda, and you're going to find very little of them in General Motors and Ford, for example. So they are fundamentally, these are the things that differentiate a lean company from a mass production company. Okay, the second thing about these practices is that implementing them is not about making small changes. Very often, it, it really is about paradigm change. So it's not about mapping your current process using value stream maps or whatever, Impl identifying small things you're not happy with, like delays or whatever, um, and trying to fix those delays, for example, with point solutions. That's not what it's about. Um, what it's about generally is understanding lean practices and it's about starting with a clean sheet and designing a process using those practices that achieves the kind of performance that you need to achieve or that you want to achieve. And the final thing I would say about the items above the line is that they're not prominent in what I would call generic Lean Sigma programs. So I would guess most organizations, most people uh, who are listening to me now, they belong to organizations who have taken on at least one lean type improvement program in the last 10 or 15 years. And what I would suggest is that if you look at the things that actually changed as a result of those programs, you will find relatively little of the items that are currently on the screen. 
So I'm going to move on now to the items that are below the screen. And the first one is equipment, or below the, below the line. The first one is equipment productivity. So that refers to techniques like OE for improving, improving equipment productivity by identifying your main losses and finding uh, action items that, that reduce them. The second item is probably the second item below the line is probably the most common element that, that gets tackled in generic programs, and that's reduction of non-value add activity. So using techniques like 5S sp spaghetti diagrams and so on. Uh, obviously, it's a very important uh, part of lean, but the truth is, if you want to gain the benefits from non-value add reduction, you first of all need to have addressed things like leveling. So once you've addressed leveling, then thereafter it's much easier to, to harness the gains from uh, non-value add reduction initiatives and the final item is lean shop floor management so primarily what i'm referring to there is visual management and huddles and when i say shop floor i could be talking about a qc operation or a qa operation just just as much as i could about a manufacturing operation so the items below the line then what's different about them well the first thing is that they're very common features of generic Lean Sigma. So, in the programs that your company has done, you've probably seen lots of this. Um, the second thing I would say is that most clients, particularly life science clients, um, who, who typically have very well-educated workforces, they have the skill sets that are required to do these things. These things are not esoteric, they're not particularly complex or difficult, and I would say that most of the clients that I work with have the skills required to do these things. And the final item I would say is that they don't gener these techniques, they don't generally require paradigm change. So they are about generic problem solving. They are about OEE loss analysis. They are about identifying the delays and so on and coming up with point solutions. That's primarily what they're about. Okay, so overall, the items on the screen are the most common elements in a real lean solution. Uh, and that applies as much in QA as it does in QC or in manufacturing. 